Hello and good evening. Welcome to another video brought to you by the NIHAS. Today we're going to go with an overview of the kit bag used by the Airsoft team that we run and the contents there within. So today we're going to start with the top left and work our way anti-clockwise, going with an overview of everything that you can see on the table of display and then ending with what's in front of the kit bag. From this point here, this is the stuff that's last out and this is stuff that's first out. So therefore this will be first in and last in. Starting off with the scrim netting, um, just used for lightly camouflaging or wrapping around your neck. Very, very helpful, especially in airsoft. Stops your neck getting shot up and also hides it as well, um, especially when you're in thick foliage. Um, it's quite easy to see skin tone color, so quite good and handy, and very practical. Then we have the rain cap. Um, don't really use these too often in airsofting, but the wee kit bag has multiple uses, um, as we do outdoor bushcraft and camping. More so used for that um, in airsoft, not really. It does keep you dry and is waterproof, however it does make a lot of rustling, um, so you can be hurt quite easily with it. Next we have our mess tins, and um, these are World War II. This wee set that I have actually is nicely did 1945. Um, these are basically used for heating up water for shaving, for tea, for cooking, eh, basically whatever you need. Um, with that comes a wee small mess tin bag. That's to stop what is very famously known as battle rattle. So whenever you have your mess tins put inside each other, as you can hear, a eh, lot of rattle. Whereas you can pop your mess tins inside your tin bag and then that means that it tries to reduce that. Um, also, um, your mess tins actually can house your rations and anything else. Um, generally they're wrapped in a cloth or something as well to stop them rattling. Um, once everything is compressed together and pushed in and then set inside your small uh, material bag, stops any rattle. Next we'll go on to the torch. Um, this is a very, very nice... This chest torch is actually a Cold War era East German torch. We use it for practical reasons as the green and red lights come in very handy. We don't use these air softening because the glass face can get shot out and um, so obviously don't want to get damaged because um, these are original but we do use them for camping and um, they're pretty good because as you can see they have the green and red coverings so you can actually change the lens type. They're quite handy and durable and button onto your actual jacket as well on the loophole. Next coming down to what is known as the housewife. Now this is the name given to the sewing kit that the soldiers all would have had for thread, buttons, needles and so on and um, basically to do any amendments or any holes, basically anything to keep the uniform in tip top shape um, regardless of where they are. Generally these would have actually had service numbers as can be seen here and are identified by the individual so you don't want to lose that. This is basically mock-up version of a Tommy cooker and um, that would have been used during the First World War. Basically it is just a tin with then the fuel tablets put inside to cook. Anything is, if they're hot and we need to move off, they can be crushed flat and then dumped later or they can be consistently reused depending on how far we use them. Generally we use them to the point where they're falling apart nearly. So we put the fuel tablets inside, ignite them, put your mess tins on top and then you can start cooking away. Um, just as a note, this is obviously not from 1900-1945, uh, these specific fuel tablets. There is some modern uh, pieces and articles within the kit to make it more functionally usable for us, um, given the century and day that we're in. But the majority of the equipment is actually original or as to spec to the original whether it's reproduction or actually from that time. Next going on to electrical tape, it's pretty self-explanatory, um, don't know much military equipment that doesn't require a bit of electrical tape put on it to keep it going, it's just handy to carry, especially more so for when we're airsofting, you can, if your battery dies you can't get it inside, it's like for example a stain, you can pull the wire to the side of the loom and just tape a new battery onto the side, or if anything starts getting wonky or falling off your, your weapon you can just tape it back on. Next we have a, what would have been very commonly carried is tobacco pouch and pipe. Pipes can be in various styles, um, some of them are even clay going back at that time. Um, this wee one is a nice wooden one, this is modernly made. And then a wee leather pouch just to keep the tobacco in itself. 
This wouldn't have been carried primarily in the kit bag. Um, could be if they were on marching order, but generally this would have been carried in the haversack or somewhere more accessible um, for the soldiers, um, or even out of cigarettes. We do not condone smoking. This is an FYI. Next, you have a jackknife. Um, this one isn't the same as the 1940 pattern, but it is more or less similar. This one's slightly earlier. Um, you have your very lovely four and a half inch blade, and then you have your pike, which is for getting into your tins of condensed milk or food itself. And then very nicely onto the side here, you have a very, very good tin opener. So there we go there. So whenever you're opening your tin, you have the spud on the side, stick it straight in, the side's double-edged, put it straight in and just start working your whole way around. And that is very, very handy. Um, to be honest, these knives don't tend to go blunt very, very often. Um, if you keep them good, they'll look after you. Going on to a pencil, um, just standard uh, Draper's pencil, flat edge. Nothing particular about that, just as a backup pencil. I uh, don't like carrying pens, um, simply the fact is they could pop or burst um, at any moment and damage your uniform equipment. Um, and at that time, you would have been more likely carrying a pencil anyway, not actually a pen. Um, but it's just handier for us. Um, next is on to a wee trench lighter. Very, very nice. This now is a reproduction. This is not original, but uh, it is very insanely usable uh, and useful. Now, it has a wee wind guard on it, as you can see when it comes up um, for striking, and it is very, very good. Anybody that's done camping or bushcraft will know the pain of having a lighter, trying to light either fuel tablets or something to start a fire or a stove. This is very, very helpful. Flint goes into the side and then just strike it and that's you, you can fill it by unscrewing the bottom. Next going on to a backup is probably one of the most famous things is a soldier and his matches. Um, soldiers number one duty is obviously king country and so on but at that time a soldier would always joke saying keeping his matches dry. So here is a lovely little tin that inside actually houses your matches. At that point, there wouldn't have been actually waterproof matches, so this is all you would have had, redhead strikers. Um, now, we have put the striking pads actually as a wee separate part inside a plastic concealed bag, just to stop it getting damp or wet, um, because at that point it's just not possible to light them. Um, so that's just kept as a backup whenever we're camping or so-and-so. Next, you're going on to your wee ration tin very early uh, 20th century, a tea and sugar box. One side you'd have your loose tea leaf, which we keep inside small plastic bags just so it doesn't make a mess when you open it. And then the opposite, um, well, is the sugar then, again, inside a wee small plastic concealable bag. Next thing is our actual ration tin. This is a very, very nice um, early 20th century food as well as a drink tin. Truly, the origins of this, these tins that we have, we're not entirely sure. They're made by a round tree, um, crest on the bottom. If anybody does have information for us on that, we would greatly appreciate it, um, just to gather the origin and original use for these. For ourselves, we use them as if they were uh, emergency ration tins. So inside this tin, you'll have the contents that's in front, and um, you'll have some wheat notes, you'll have some hardtack biscuits, You'll have powdered milk um, that we put inside a wee bag. They're more modern, but uh, waterproof matches, um, just as an emergency. On the inside, on the lid of the tin, is actually a striking pad that we have put in temporarily with tape just to hold it in place. You will then have a lovely uh, lighter, again, just as backup. Because of the type of camping we do, making fire for cooking and also for uh, warmth is a primary necessity. Next, you go on to this wee small tin here just has your salt and pepper inside just to make your meals taste nicer and then a lovely little small jar of jam eh, or jelly goes inside that basically for your hard type biscuits make them a bit easier to go down and then again another modern implement which is purifying water tablets and um, just so when we're out and about because you have no idea the source of the water you're drinking from. When we're up in the mountains, generally we're not too worried, but for example, if you're doing long treks through forest areas, goodness knows what the water conditions like. Normally it's boiled first, and then when it's boiled, put it into the canteen, and then drop one or two of these in just to, just to keep it okay. And then on to this lovely little example, 1933-1945 made emergency escape compass. 
uh, the north is pointed out and indicated by the red uh, tip on it. Um, sadly, it is cracked, but it is still usable and it's quite a nice addition we have. But uh, okay, so this here is the wash roll. Inside basically everything from your KVS, your knife, fork, spoon, comb, uh, shaving utensils, um, shaving brush, soaps, foot powder, and even got your brasses for cleaning your buttons and stuff, and then toothbrush. So all these articles would be used then just for keeping yourself in tip-top condition, hygiene, and also for eating. So anything like that will be just kept inside as we roll. It's just all rolls up and then ties at the end, and is all kept and bound together. The addition that we have in this is we have for loose tea leaves, we closed off spoon in order to put the tea leaves inside and then mix with the, to the hot water put straight in. As I said before, you can boil water in your mess tins. Whenever you are boiling the water in your mess tins, you generally you try to make it that it's for multiple uses, as in you use it for hot water for a beverage, um, for cleaning something, um, or actually also for cooking other food, and then lastly then for possibly shaving. So you'd pour the hot water from your tins into your cup, and then you could use this in your cup. It means you're not tainting the water that you could use for cleaning or washing with. And then onto your cup, just standard, very, very typical uh, white enamel blue rim cup. This one, as you can see, is new. Uh, whenever you do see these, they're chipped and bound and cracked everywhere, um, just from being hauled and battered. Um, but they are very, very durable and made you know, out a very good tin. Very, very nice little cup, but very iconic for the British Army, um, First and Second World War. And then on to the Princess Mary tin. We do have a number of these wee tins that the lads do carry in their kit bags. And these were given out in Christmas 1914 as a tribute to the soldiers, as a basically gift from home because the soldiers at that time all thought the war would be over by Christmas, which obviously it wasn't. So inside, they would have gotten, this is empty now, but they would have had originally chocolate, pack of cigarettes, a few photographs of the royal family, and then there would have been a, a, a small pencil. Pencils are actually quite unique and very, very hard to get. Um, it cost you a small fortune, and then you'd have some uh, writing paper you could use as well. So the wee tins, generally they do survive. There's quite a number of them about. You can get them the likes of eBay or from collectors, um, antique shops and so on. But they, you do tend to find they're battered. As you can see from this one, doesn't close properly. Um, and it's quite dented. Although the fact of what it represents and when and where it's from makes it quite a beautiful item, to be honest. And then lastly is your kit bag. The kit bag itself is a P37 webbing kit bag. As before, the society uses a lot of equipment, uh, mainly British and Commonwealth from 1900 to 1945 with the first and second world webbing, mainly because when you're in airsoft, we're trying to find things that are a lot more practical for use. And a lot of the equipment isn't obviously adaptable to that. So there's a mix and match as opposed to whenever we do historical events or any centenary events or um, talks then everything always at that point is as it was back then. So you wouldn't find a lot of the stuff here that is World War II, for example, including this bag, um, you wouldn't find us doing in a First World War display and vice versa. So basically that's us folks. Um, thank you very much for taking the time to watch our video. Hope you enjoyed it. Do leave a comment down below, let us know what you thought. Give us a like and if there's any other videos you would like us to do, please um, leave a comment, let us know or catch us on one of our other social media sites and have a great day thank you